Hi guys! Welcome back to the Knit in the Grid podcast. My name is Jackson and I am your Knitty host. This is episode 9, I think. Either way, doesn't matter. New episode. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at the Knit in the Grid. And I'm also on Ravelry as Jackson Rev, all one word. And there is also a podcast group on Ravelry for this podcast, and it is the Knit in the Group podcast. And you can find the show notes there, and as well as the Festive Cal, which I have going on right now. So you can go over there and see all of the rules and everything about that. It is a fall, winter based holiday make along which I've officially made a make along because I have been needle pointing and stuff and so I wanted to include that in there because why not and so that's going to be running through to the end of November so you have time go over there join the group I'm hoping it'll be a lot of fun I am a Christmas addict hence the Christmas lights that I have in my new apartment in the fireplace TV thing that I have going on right now in my my new humble abode for the next six months um but yeah so that's the cal it is the hashtag festive kcal cal because I wanted to initially include knitting and crocheting but now I'm going to include general making. So I'll probably also include a festive M-A-L hashtag thing. But yeah, that's kind of it for my little admin spiel there. In case y'all haven't noticed, this is a very different setup. Um, I moved. That's why I've been MIA for a while. (laughs) I am currently in Beverly, Massachusetts. I got a job as an accounting clerk for Netflix on a movie that is happening up here. It is more of a, it's not, it's it's just a job for the next six months while I'm in, from like, pre-production into post-production so yeah but I am learning a lot and it's really cool it's really fun to be seeing kind of what's going on behind the scenes in the office part of a movie certainly not the most interesting but it should be really cool we start actual production next month so in July so yay But yeah, so I have been working. I've been at my job for the past three weeks since the beginning of May. So I think I last podcasted and then found out I got the job and then started packing, went to Gatlinburg with my boyfriend and his family. And then the day I got in, my mom flew in to help me finish packing and drive with me up to Boston and kind of help me find an apartment and get kind of settled before I moved into the apartment and then she flew back to Florida so thanks mom I love you and um, so I have been knitting I haven't finished a lot of stuff but knitting has been happening but work has been happening too so the knitting finishing and everything has like slowed down a little bit where I've just wanted to knit on very specific things. So, yeah. That is kind of the the quick and dirty of what's been going on. But to dive into my knitty content, I do have some finished objects. It is two, and one of them is very small, but whatever, I'm counting it. First of all, these are my sister's Hermione's Everyday Socks. They're finally done. I finished these in the car as we were driving across New York, which took forever. But I cast it off the second toe, which I think, yeah, this is the second sock. 
Um, I can tell because it hasn't been blocked yet, which is why my sister hasn't gotten them. But, um, but anyways, super duper cute. They're on Sparkle Sock, which I don't know if that's going to show up very well. Oh, you can kind of see it. A little, little glitter action. But these are, as I've said probably way too many times, um, an Ottoman Indigo Mini is what the cuff is done in, in this really soft kind of dovey gray. And then the, so I have no idea what this is called. And then the main body of the sock is done in Hue Loco in their Glitz Sock in the Yas Queen colorway. And so very fun, very cute, very pink. I think my sister will really like them. She picked out the pattern because I already made myself a pair of socks in the Hermione's Everyday pattern. And she's like, oh my gosh, I really love this. And she's like, can you make me socks like this? So yeah, these are finally done. There are two, all the ends are woven in. This one just needs to get a wash and a block. So, and then they can go off to her, but I wanted to podcast before I sent them to her. So that's my first finished object. Super cute. My second one <laughs> is really cute too, because they're tiny. So these are some baby socks. These are newborn sized. No, I'm not pregnant. No, I don't. Well, I do have a friend who is pregnant, but that is moot. These, these are just for enjoyment and what have you and to go into a stash. But um, these are from my Christmas minis, from my Christmas advent from Barnyard Knits from last year. And so I got the sparkle um, advent. They're just really cute, very Christmassy colored ones. And I've just been really enjoying doing the newborn baby socks because they're small and you can get one done in a day. And I want to make a little garland out of them. So these are on the little Hey Sister Yarn Quo newborn baby sock blockers, which sadly they're they're going out of business. But um, I really like these little sock blockers. I wish I'd gotten in on buying a bunch more than just four, but I probably don't need more than four. Anyways, so that was a tangent. Um, these are really cute. I finished these earlier this week, I think. Um, I'd had the first one done for a while and I just never cast on the second one until recently. But I'm really loving these. They're like that instant gratification kind of stuff that you need sometimes. And, you know, they kind of don't really take much thought and what have you. It's so much easier than big people socks. But, um, but yeah. That's it for my finished objects. I do have a half finished object. This was also, um, if I'm not mistaken, I completed this sock on the car ride as well up here. So this is just a vanilla sock. I put a little stripe in the cuff and this is in Woolberry Fiber Co's um, all treats no tricks colorway and then the spiced pumpkin colorway that she had with her fall collection I've got progress keepers in here because I did these on 2.25 millimeter needles and I made the leg a little bit longer than I would normally and then because I did these on 2.25 millimeter needles um, I had to make the foot a tiny bit longer because my gauge was a little bit different. Well, I mean, I'm on smaller needles, so they're a little bit tighter. But because um, normally I make my socks on 2.5 millimeter needles, needles, but I'm liking how snug these are. But yeah, so um, I am working on the second sock. I'm still on the leg, but um, because I'm still on the leg, I'm keeping the progress keepers in so I can keep track of where I made some changes to my regular vanilla sock pattern. My lighting's not super great in my apartment, but we will try. But yeah, it's super cute. Very, it's very soft and pink and uh, with like orange and yellow speckles. And it's going to probably up pretty bad. 
but either way this has been in my stash for a while I've wanted to make something with this so I finally did and I've talked about this on the podcast before but we have Wyndham and I really like how it looks very like kind of sporty but still also kind of springy while using a f like fall themed colorways it just kind of fits I think with like transitional kind of colors or transitional season colors but so I'm really liking those I'm looking forward to having this sock done because I really like this wool because it's the natural sock that she does so it's a little bit um it's a little bit more rustic than your normal merino because it's a little it's a different composition let's see if it says it on here so it's 50 percent bfl 50 percent chevaux chevy chev french but um but i really like it and i think it'll make some for some very strong sturdy socks even though there's no nylon in it but i like it all the same it'll be really fun i'm getting a little bit of flashing here on this one but that doesn't really bother me I kind of like it. Then there's like a bunch of pink all together in one spot. But yeah, that is, so that's my, my one half finished object. And then now onto my giant pile of whips. I, whew, I got hit with some cast on iris the other day. I now have um, technically four sweaters on the needles. And yeah, so I guess we'll we'll start off with the big one in my numerous knitting Nelly bags over here because I have to alternate skeins with mohair and they kept getting tangled. So I've got one in a small knitting Nelly bag and then the other one is just loose in the big sweater bag. Um, but I have my no frill sweater which I have decided to make a short sleeve sweater mainly because I don't want to knit on it anymore and also where it's almost summer even though it doesn't feel like it here because it's 50 and raining outside but either way I figured this would be really great in the office look how speckly it is and I have enough to finish the sleeves but I'm thinking I will make this a short sleeve sweater for now and then in the fall maybe pick out the the ribbing and put in full sleeves because I do have enough I have I have um, two more skeins of the fig Phyllis sock yarn which is the speckly yarn and I also have two two more skeins of the mohair so I can very easily do the sleeves like make full length sleeves at a later date because I do want to have full sleeves on this eventually but as of right now I don't know if I really want to that might change when I finally finish the body so I've got about 10 centimeters left to go on the body before I start the ribbing so I'm really close to being done with the body and probably once I get there I might get re-inspired to do sleeves because sleeves would be really nice because my office is really cold plus I, I'd love to have this just 100% done so I don't have to worry about it but I also think this would be really cute as a short sleeve sweater because it just look very very precious and I tried it on the um, the other day just to make sure that it was going to fit and I liked how it looks short sleeves, but I could also make another one in some different yarn with maybe without the mohair. That can be um, a short sleeve version, maybe, potentially. Plus if it's a short sleeve version, it looks like I might be able to get away with just two skeins of yarn. But yeah, so I have that. It's been getting a lot of love recently. I took it to midnight here in Salem at Circle of Stitches and got a good good bit of knitting done on this and I've been bringing it to work and working on it on my lunch break 
Now that stuff is just, oh, it looks so lovely. It's gonna be so pretty when it's done. I'm so excited. But, so that is sweater whip number one. Sweater whip number two is of my own creation. And I am not very far along because I had just casted this on. I've got this in my giant porter bin from Fringe Supply Co. On some chow goos. But this is, I was watching Hey Sister Yarnco's most recent, or Hey Sister podcast, their most recent episode, where they were talking about how they weren't going to be um, dying yarn to sell really anymore. And I got kind of sad. But then I was like, oh, I've got a whole sweater's quantity of yarn, so I might as well cast some on. So this is their Drizzle Colorway, which is this really great kind of golden brown color. It makes me think of caramel sauce and chocolate. And this is going to be, this is the neck ribbing. It stretches a lot. It will fit around my head. I've already tested it, but it stretches. And um, I did a German twisted cast on, which is kind of new to me. But I've been really liking it. I've been doing it on my um, on any socks that I've cast on recently to have a little bit more of a stretchier cast on, and I like it a lot. And this is going to be a top-down raglan sweater, and that's about as much as I'm going to tell you, because there's some some different design qualities happening with this, and I haven't really seen anything like it and I've had this idea for this particular sweater pattern for a really long time and I've had this yarn for a really long time. I originally tried working this out bottom up and I hated it. And so I started the no frills and the Sunday sweater by Petite Knit so I could figure out how to do a kind of simple top down sweater. So yeah. Now that I have the general idea of how it works and I don't feel as intimidated by doing a top-down sweater, we're designing a top-down sweater. So this is going to be in Drizzle and Taupe Frost, which I kind of feel bad showing y'all these because they aren't going to be really dying anymore. Let's see if I can get this to focus. I've got a different setup for this right now because I'm having to do this from my iPad because I didn't bring my camera up here with me. Um, but Taupe Frost is just very like kind of taupey gray and kind of variegated and stuff and I think it'll look really pretty for what I'm going to be doing with it. So we have the starts of a baby sweater. And we have a start of another baby sweater which will be the exact same design that I'm working on with the Hey Sister yarn but in fingering weight, because that is their squishy DK, I think. Um, but it's their DK base, and I decided to do one in fingering, which this is not gonna show up how it should, I don't think. But I have also, all I've done is cast on the neckband, and it's in one by one rib. But this is in Woolberry Fiber Co's smoke colorway on their on their tweed base and I'm the yarn that Bethany puts out is lovely and gorgeous and I want all of it but I can't buy all of it sadly but I do have a sweater quantity of smoke and I've had it for a little while I was originally planning on doing the no fills in this but I didn't buy any mohair at the time so I decided to repurpose this into my own sweater design. And this will be a little bit different, but it'll kind of follow the same general plan, but it's just gonna be all in this really pretty smoke color way. And which I'll actually I'll pull out this so you can you can see like there's a bunch of nips and um, like little white parts and stuff, and it's really pretty. And it's like a dark, dark charcoal. There we go. Yeah, super dark charcoal. So I think it'll look really pretty all knit up and be really great if I have this done before the fall and stuff. Um, I tend to dress up as a witch every year for Halloween. 
super original. But since I am in Beverly, which is just over the bridge from Salem, I figured I could take some kind of fun witchy finished object photos in this, in Salem, potentially. I don't know, maybe. We will see. But, uh, but yeah, I really love it. And I'm so excited. And yeah, I'm almost done with the ribbing on both of these. So, yeah. That's sweater number three on the needles. Sweater number four, I'm just going to show for a hot second. I haven't picked this up at all, but it's... I separated for the sleeves and then I stopped. <laughs> Shame on me. But it's my Sunday sweater. And this is also in Hey Sister Yarn Co.'s... Um, or this is also Hey Sister Yarn Co., but it's in their Tweed Aran Base and their Fluff Mohair in the Smitten colorway. So I just have the yoke done and I've done a few rounds on the bra at the very bottom. But I need to start alternating skeins and that's kind of when I stopped. I didn't want to alternate, do the helical alternation. Alternation. Oh, alternating. I didn't want to do the helical alternating um, up here where all of this pretty ribbed yoke was. So I just needed, I need to get to the beginning of the round and then I can start alternating. Or that's why I'd prefer to start alternating. But, um, but yeah, so that's why this hasn't gotten any love. I also can't try it on since um, I've got it on this really short cable. But I think I'll be able to switch that out because I finally found an interchangeable cable that was a long one that's free. So, but yeah. I really love this color. This is honestly like my perfect color. Just like that soft, like this is like a deep rosy red. But I look really good in these, in these kinds of reds. They're also like my favorite color ever. But um, this is also really, really um, warm and stuff because this is Aran weight yarn held with mohair. And um, so the motivation to work on this now that we're moving into summer is kind of low. Even though it would be super cute to wear. And I have no problem wearing non-seasonal things year-round. So... Uh, hello world, this is me. I will wear sweaters in the middle of summer. And drink all, all the teas. Uh, let's see, what else should I show? I'll show shawls. So I've got two shawls on the needles right now. One, I'll show this one first. So this one is in my fringe supply co-field bag. And... I think the last time I showed this, I'd only had a little bit done. Now I have a lot more done, but I haven't really picked this up recently. So this is my Bennett Sister Shawl by Lindsay Fowler. And this is in the Chasing Clouds colorway by Mulberry Fabric Hill. I got their Elizabeth kit um, for this shawl. One, because Elizabeth is my favorite. and. Yeah, and I figured this would be a really nice blue. I was a little worried when it came in as to whether it would be too pale for me. Because I am very, I am of the, the pale group of people in the world. I do not tan, I freckle and burn. But, um, so I have a hard time pulling off kind of pastel colors. But when it came in and I went into the bathroom and like held this up, not this part, but um, held the skeins up to my face. I was like, oh, this kind of makes my eyes pop because they're blue too. I was like, oh, fun. But so this is, I think, where I was when I last podcasted. So I've definitely added a lot of inches. Well, not a lot. I've, I've added like five inches. But uh, I'm almost done with the straight garter section that I'm on. So I believe I have like 10 more 
rounds to go until I start doing the stockinette, like where there's there's going to be like a big stockinette V going up the middle. So um, really excited for that because I think that will make things speed along a little bit faster even though I've really enjoyed the potato chippiness of this just being garter and it's super squishy right now. But then once I get half, once I do that, then it's on to the mohair, which this is the Persian rug mohair, silk mohair that Wilbury Fiber included in the kit as the mohair contrast. So I'm excited to see how that knits up with the Chasing Clouds colorway. And this is on the berry, berry sock, I think is what it is, but it's a uh, BFL nylon. So really excited, really enjoying BFL. I want more things in BFL. So yeah, that is one of my shawls. I haven't picked it up much. Actually, I don't think I picked it up at all since I got up here, but I really should because I wear shawls a lot in the office because I, I brought my a girl's best friend shawl up with me. Oh, fuck. Oh, here. Um, my girl's a girl's best friend shawl is up here with me, and then a shawl that I had bought from um, the Nordstrom anniversary sale from a few years ago, I brought up with me because it's just a, a big gray wrap kind of thing. And I've been wearing them a lot in the office since it's really chilly. And then, um, and it's been kind of chilly when I leave in the morning here since. Um, New England summers aren't as hot as I'm used to, slash New England springs. But yeah, so I want more shawls, and I have another shawl on my needles, and this one was just a random cast on earlier this year that I haven't touched again since um, moving up here. But this is the Spendrift Shawl by Curious Handmaid or Helen Stewart. And this is in the Knox Fiber Co's. Um, it's the Minerva base, which is her 50% silk, 50% merino wool base. But I don't know if she's really, if that was just a special thing that she was doing for a little while. But this is the Pumpkin Pasties colorway, which came out last year. And I got this as a um, birthday present to myself. And uh, I made pumpkin pasties on my birthday because my boyfriend got me the Harry Potter cookbook thing and so I've just I've wanted this and then this is a crescent shaped shawl so which I've never made one like this before so I'm really excited I was gonna have um, like some eyelet um, kind of striping uh, in a, I think a few more rows I have to do until I get there, and then it has a, a pico bind off, which I'm kind of excited to do, but I don't know if I have enough yarn because the yardage on this, this is fingering weight, but the yardage is a little bit, um, I think it's 400 yards, and the pattern calls for a little bit more. But I'm also thinking it might be kind of cool if I whipped out some mohair and did the pico bind off in mohair. Like in some white mohair, here? Maybe? I might have to test that out a little bit. But, you know, the world's my oyster. I can do what I want. But I really like this. It's super soft and drapey and very luxurious with the silk. So I figured a shawl was going to be the best option for this. It's got like a really great like sheen. It's very orange and stuff so I want to have this also done by fall so I can wear it then as well but that is my shawls now on to socks this is a new bag from circle of stitches when I was there last I don't know who made this I don't know if they put a tag on it oh home row fiber co bag by them but they have this in the store at Circle of Stitches and I have three sock projects sitting in this bag so and they're probably all really tangled because I 
I walked up to the coffee shop that I really like um, in like near my apartment and was knitting and walking at the same time but I brought all of my whips with me to the coffee shop so now they're kind of a little bit of a tangly mess oh goodness there we go so I'm going to preface this with some of these are gift knits. Um, some of them, well, two of them are gift knits. One of them is for my little baby sock garland that I'm doing for funsies. I'm planning on making it into an advent garland, so I'm going to show that one first. So this is another mini from my advent calendar last year from Barnard Knits and I just really love it it's a really great red and it makes me think of like like Santa's um, suit from going up and down chimneys all the time so it's got a little sit on it but it's really cute and sparkly and I just finished the heel flap and I'm about to do the heel turn so I'll probably if I when I finish this podcast I'll probably work on this a little bit and get the, t the heel turned and pick up for the instep and everything. And then, um, and then it'll be pretty much straight knitting. But this is really cute. I'm doing, I did German twisted casting on this. And then there's like just five rows of two by two ribbing and it's straight stock stocking it from there. So not a lot going on there. I have a newfound load love for chaggy needles. And so that's a little dangerous. So now I'm just wanting to switch out all my needles into chow goose, but I don't really need to be doing that. But um, either way, they have chow goo needles at the yarn store, so I've been every time I go there, I pick up another set of needles. Next pair is one that I'm kind of designing on myself by myself. This is. <sighs> I, I figured that I am skilled enough as a knitter now to not have to follow a pattern or anything like that. I can kind of play around a little bit more. I don't feel as scared about the idea of being like, oh, socks, like, oh, I need to, I need to know or have a plan or whatever. So I just kind of casted these on and then did a little eyelet cable and these are going to be a Christmas present for my boyfriend's mother and I casted these on solely because I had the yarn already caked up and I wanted socks to work on but these are sparkly and hot pink and it's called Fight Like a Girl which I feel is very fitting for Kim I don't think she watches the podcast so I think we're safe if not, sorry Kim, this is what you're getting for Christmas. <laughs> um, these are really cute. I really like this pattern. And then my other one is for my own mother. She picked out this yarn while we were up here when she came with me to help me drive the 22 hours from Oxford, Mississippi to Boston. And this is, um, she picked this out at the yarn store. So this is Malabrigo. Aguas, I think. Um, and I'm also kind of designing the sock for this. I'm going to make these not quite shorty socks, but like ankle socks. I feel like she'll prefer that a little bit more. But, um, but yeah, so she knows I'm making these for her for Christmas and she picked out the yarn and everything. But I'm not going to go into any detail about the design because I've been fiddling with it and trying to figure out what I'm doing. I finally settled on something, but I know my mom watches the podcast, so I'll just show off the cuff. But I'm doing a little bit longer cuff because my mom has really tiny ankles. And then I'm doing these on nine inch circulars and what have you, which is really convenient and I think will fit her a little bit better because my tension's a little bit tighter or my gauge is a little bit tighter on the nine inch circulars. But, yeah, 
And I did a German twisted cast on for this as well, so there shouldn't be any issues with it being too tight at the very top to not fit around her foot. Which, I mean, I haven't had any issues with that being the case, but, you know, when you're making them for someone else, you don't want that to, to happen. But I also like that the German twisted cast on is very similar to um, long tail cast on. This is like a really pretty teal kind of turquoisey color. And this is very much like the perfect color for my mom. So, really like it. I'm having fun working on these. And I'm almost done with the ribbing. And I'm doing a twisted two by two rib because I feel like that looks a little bit better because it kind of gives you like a really sharp looking rib. And, oh yeah. So that's kind of it for my knitting. I have a crazy amount of whips right now and I gotta get on it. Gotta finish up some things. But I do have some other stuff like this is, Normally this is just a knitting podcast, but I have some needle work going on here that isn't knitting related. So I figured I'd show this. I recently got a cross stitch pattern project thing. So this is, I got this at Circle of Stitches. There we go. And it is going to be a kind of phases of the moon cross stitch pattern. And I'm really excited, I've been having a lot of fun. I've obviously only just started and I'm not super great at it, nor am I very fast or efficient. But I really like it. It's a lot like needlepoint. But I'm excited to have this and this will be like a cute little hanging project. And I have, it came as a kit. So I get to, like the whole kit includes even the stuff you need for finishing. And what have you so you can hang it on your wall as soon as you're done kind of thing. And so I'm really excited about that. So that'll be kind of cool. And it kind of fits with um, like being a project for the movie I'm working on because it's a Halloween movie. And so yeah, so I'm really excited. I think it's going to be really cute. I'm really excited to have it done, especially since it's a project with, a, with something that I've never done before. So that is current little whip. And it came in this really great like little cardboard envelope and it came with the like instructions for how to do the stitches so it's very beginner friendly and has like diagrams on how to do everything and it comes with um, like a charted out pattern and then like this is that's what it's going to look like when it's all done and then all the thread and the needles and then the felt finish so it was really great and really helpful that it was an all-inclusive kit with nothing that I had to go out and really get myself other than like scissors but you know like I have my own scissors and most people usually do have scissors in their home so that was really great and fun. My next project is needlepoint and this is why this is the project that has instigated the festive cow to become a make a full on make along. So this is by Kimberly and Needlepoint. And I got this off of needlepoint.com and I was able to get thread and needles with this. It's not a kit, but they have the option to buy threads to go with it. So I've done all of the white and then I'm on the brown section now and I'm gonna do all of the brown and then I'll do the blue and then the red since red's my favorite color, I'm putting it off for last. So that way then um, I don't just finish my favorite color and then not do anything else. But I'm really loving this. This will become a little ornament. I have to find a needlepoint finisher. So if anyone has any great suggestions for people to go to or um, anything like that, that'd be really great. But I haven't, I haven't done much with um, finishing needlepoint. My mom has, when I was little and I did needlepoint, she kind of handled the finishing, but we had a, a needlepoint store that did, that was like full service and did finishing, I think. Or I've done stuff that doesn't require you to send it out to be finished. Like a, you could go and get like a little luggage tag thing and like finish it yourself. But I want this to be 
fully finished and um, with like you know like a little fancy cord and what have you because I want this to look very put together when it's all done and I don't have it on little stretcher bars so it's kind of warped right now because I don't I'm not that fancy but I've got all of my stuff in there my scissors my needle threader my extra needles and all my threads and yeah so I really like that and I'm really excited I'm also I'm a hot chocolate addict anyways so I thought it was very fitting and very cute and so that's that's everything this has honestly been probably the main reason why I don't have other finished objects because I've been working on this because I brought this to work and I power I was like powering through the white I'm really glad I'm done with the white because you know like that's not not crazy fun but um but yeah it'll be really cute when it's all done and it will also be really nice to I want to have a bunch of homemade or handmade ornaments that I have made eventually so this is a good start along with my little little baby sock um garland that I'm going to be making but yeah, in terms of what's been going on with me, um, kind of already covered that. I, oh, I have acquisitions. I completely forgot about this. One moment. I have a chest of drawers behind me that I've been keeping on my yarn. <laughs> pull out one of each but um so right before I left to come up here I was binge watching Outlander as one does which is really surprising that I never got into Outlander until now because it's right up my alley and um so I got really excited and then Chris, not Chris, oh my god, Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarn did an Outlander collection right when I was getting into Outlander. So of course, had to buy parts of the collection. Let's see. Light, do your light thing in the good way. Um, let me click on things. Uh, kind of did it. Uh, so I got in on the Outlander collection and these are the three colors that I got. Uh, I got cart jacked because I wanted to get everything in BFL and I wasn't able to get this particular color which is Craig Nadoon which is showing up kind of purplier than it is. It's more gray but um so this is on her lore base. So I was still able to get some, but I did get cart jacked on her shepherdess base, which was originally in the cart for me. But I have two skeins of this. This will be going into a sweater, or not a sweater. This will be going into a shawl that I plan on making that I'll be holding with mohair. And I don't remember what the shawl is called, but I have it in my queue. And it's a gray shawl, and it's really pretty with lace and stuff. But I figured it would look really good in this. And then it also calls for no hair, so it'll be really fuzzy and nice. And then I also have two skeins of each of these, which are are in the Shepherdess base, which is her 80% BFL, 20% nylon. This color is Lalibra. And then this lovely purple color is Sassnack. And I'm really excited. I'm not really sure what I'm going to make with these quite yet. I'm kind of debating, but I wanted them, so they will be made into something eventually. I'm thinking probably, <sighs> I'm not sure. I was thinking probably a shawl out of this, but I don't know. I also meant mine socks, but I could also do devote one skein to socks 
And then the other skein with the lava brock into maybe a shawl. I don't know, because I feel like they look good together. They just might need a third color that's more neutral. I don't know. We will see. But those are some of my acquisitions. There are so many plans for like things that I want to make right now. And now that I'm working, it's like, oh my gosh, there's not enough hours in the day. But let's see. There is, I'm going to my Ravelry, so pardon. Log me in. Where is my cube? There it is. Oh, okay. So the shawl that I plan on making with the Craig Nadoon colorway with some mohair is the Eventide by Sylvia McFadden. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. So this shawl is really gorgeous, and I've had my eye on it for a really long time. There we go. And it's just really gorgeous and big and pretty, and it totally doesn't help that the pictures are utterly gorgeous. Which of course aren't going to show it very well. But that's one of the things that I plan on making. I also might turn maybe one of the BFL hats into a um, Oslo hat. I really like the petite knit patterns because they're really simple and easy to follow. I know that a lot of people have issues with the fact that um, she's not the most inclusive of size knit uh, designers but um but her also has like a really simple uh mohair and veneering weight hat and it's kind of the the simple hat that I've like been looking for for a really long time so I plan on making that and I might do that with the lally brock or the the assassinat colorway but I have so much stuff on my Ravelry queue right now because there's I just want to knit all the things and I want to make all the things for all the people. So that's an also like why I'm doing the festive cow because that's or festive make along. That's really all I want to do is like I want to make things for myself and I want to knit things for other people. And I don't have enough hours in the day, and I don't have enough hands to do everything that I want to do. But that's okay. We'll make it work. Plus, I'm here for six months, and since I'm kind of just working, and then on the weekends I'm tired, so I don't really want to do very much. Um, my weekends have been my knitting time, and I get off work kind of late, so there's not a lot of time to do a lot of other things. And I'm not a big drinker, uh, and you know, like I have my coworkers, but I don't know many people up here, so that is my time to get all the things done. And I'm hoping that while I'm up here, I am able to get all of my holiday knitting that I want to get done done, like 100% finished before um, we finish up with or before like the accounting department finishes in wrap so that is my goal I have one two three four five six I have potentially six to seven projects that I want to make for people so hopefully the next six months is enough time to do all of that and do all the knitting that I want to do for myself. We'll see. But anyways, thank y'all for watching so much. Um, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you feel so inclined. Uh, I've noticed recently that there are some new people who are following me or who have subscribed to my channel. And so thank you so much and also welcome. 
as I do this at the very end of the podcast. But, uh, yeah, it means a lot. And I'm hopefully going to be better at posting. We'll see. Work is going to make it kind of interesting. Um, but, yeah. All right, well, I hope you'll have a great rest of your weekend. And I'll talk to you later.